everyone. Welcome to my series of lessons on practical coastal navigation. As an advanced cruising instructor with Sail Canada, I've taught a lot of navigation topics on board and underway, including circumnavigating Vancouver Island on multi-week trips. These lessons are intended to help you obtain an understanding of basic topics. And they reflect the lectures I give on board and include a lot of practical topics for staying off the rocks. In this first lesson, we'll look at latitude and longitude. In the next lesson, I'll cover true magnetic and compass bearings. Then I'll move on to tides and currents and understanding how these are presented on Canadian hydrographic charts and in the tides and current tables. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These navigation videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can take the place of accredited courses from qualified instructors and developing your own skills over time. You are responsible for choosing destinations and cruising areas that are within your own level of navigation experience and ability. When you go out in the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. So let's get started with this first topic of latitude and longitude. Many of my students already have a good understanding of this, but it's worth covering it again so that you're sure of what it all means. When it comes to navigation, there are two basic needs to be addressed. First, where are you? And second, how do you get to where you want to go? And in a marine environment, this primarily means how do you get there safely? Latitudes and longitudes are primarily concerned with defining a scheme to identify locations on the surface of the Earth. To identify locations on a surface, you need an XY grid so that every location can be defined as the intersection of two points on the grid. But unfortunately, and sorry to tell all you members of the Flat Earth Society, this doesn't work on a sphere. If you try to wrap this flat sheet around a spherical Earth, it just gets all crumpled up. So what we need is a series of lines that run smoothly over the entire Earth's surface. And since the Earth is a sphere that rotates on an axis, the North-South Pole will use that axis and define grid lines as angles subtending from the axis of rotation. Subtends. That means it spans an angle. So let's look at where these angles come from. Here is the Earth, and this is the equator. We define lines of longitude as running along the Earth's surface from the North Pole to the South Pole, like this. One of these lines is called the Prime Meridian. It's an arbitrarily set reference line of zero degrees. This is the Prime Meridian, running through or close to Greenwich, England. The lines of longitude are identified by their angles from the Prime Meridian. These lines represent 20 degrees and 40 degrees west and 20 degrees and 40 degrees east from the prime meridian. The lines are assigned angles east and west because in the age of sail, ships sailed east and west from Europe. To see where these angles come from, we can slice the earth into two half spheres or hemispheres like this. This is the southern hemisphere. If we draw a line from the center of the earth out to the equator, this line touches the prime meridian, and it's set as the reference line of zero degrees. Then the degrees of the lines of longitude are the degrees of the angles from this center line going east and west around the Earth. These lines are the angles going 20 degrees and 40 degrees west and 20 degrees and 40 degrees east from the zero degree reference line. And of course, the lines of longitude go all the way around the Earth to 180 degrees east and 180 degrees west, these being the same line. So the lines of longitude are named as the degrees, minutes, and tenths of minutes of their angles from the center line. And each line of longitude is a line that runs from the North Pole to the South Pole. Okay, so that's longitude. But now to complete the grid, we need latitude. If longitude refers to long lines running from north to south, then latitude refers to lateral lines running east-west. Let's take a look at that. The lines of latitude run perpendicular to the lines of longitude, and they run east-west like this. They are defined as angles north and south from the equator. 
These lines are 20 degrees and 40 degrees north, and 20 degrees and 40 degrees south. To see where these angles come from, we can look at the equatorial plane inside the Earth like this. The zero degree line starts at the center of the Earth and goes out to the equator. Then the Earth's axis from the center of the Earth to the North Pole is 90 degrees up from the equatorial plane. Now let's draw a line that goes 20 degrees up from the equatorial plane towards the north. If we rotate that 20 degree line all the way around the surface of the Earth, we get the line of latitude of 20 degrees north. Then we can draw another line up another 20 degrees, and you get the line of latitude of 40 degrees north. This is all repeated in the southerly direction to get the lines of latitude south of the equator. So that's where our angles of latitude and longitude come from. And together, they provide a grid over the entire surface of the Earth, so that we can identify every point on the surface of the Earth as an intersection of lines of longitude and latitude. And these lines will be in degrees, minutes, and tenths of minutes. Normally, an angle of one degree is further divided into 60 minutes, and a minute is divided into 60 seconds. But for convenience, charts and GPSs display degrees, minutes, and tenths of minutes. So, every point on the surface of the Earth can be defined very accurately to the nearest tenth of a minute on a chart for both latitude and longitude. So now, let's look at a chart to see how you find these grid lines and what sort of values you might expect to see. We'll look at a chart for an area you may be familiar with, English Bay in Vancouver. Here is a chart of English Bay. This chart is taken from OpenCPN running on my laptop. Here is a line running towards the North Pole, so it's a line of longitude. This line is 123 degrees and 20 decimal zero minutes west. We are west of the prime meridian, so in our part of the world, we have west lines of longitude. And they increase going west and decrease going back east towards the prime meridian. Here is a lateral line running east-west, so it's a line of latitude. This line is 49 degrees and 20 decimal zero minutes north. We are north of the equator, so our lines of latitude are north lines, and they increase going north and decrease going south back towards the equator. At the intersection of these two lines, this location is 49 degrees and 20 decimal zero minutes north latitude and 123 degrees and 20 decimal zero minutes west longitude. That would be exactly your location if you were in a boat at this spot where these two lines intersect. Wherever you are on a boat, you can determine the latitude and longitude of your location with a parallel ruler and read the latitude on the side of the chart and the longitude on the top or bottom. If you take a navigation course, you can get practice reading these values. In the case of using an electronic chart like CPN, you could place your cursor on a location and read its lat long directly. Or you could even attach a GPS receiver to your laptop and CPN will display your boat's location by reading the GPS receiver. When you're underway, as a skipper, you need to keep yourself aware of your latitude and longitude, and you need to make sure someone else on the boat is equally able to determine your latitude and longitude, so that if you require assistance, you can report your position to the Coast Guard. Now, let's look at some additional characteristics of these lines of latitude and longitude that we need to understand. First, let's look at lines of longitude. Each line of longitude divides the Earth into a hemisphere, like this. Any line on the surface of the Earth that divides the Earth into equal hemispheres, or equal halves, is called a great circle. All lines of longitude are great circles. There are other great circles besides just lines of longitude. Pick any two points on the surface of the Earth, and the shortest distance between them will be a great circle line. And that's why you fly so far north from North America to Europe or Asia, because those are the great circle routes. The next thing to note is that lines of longitude converge towards the poles. They are widest apart at the equator, but they get closer and closer heading north or south, and they meet at the poles, so they are not parallel. However, it's very interesting to note that on nautical charts, lines of longitude in fact are parallel, going north or south. Hmm, why would that be? 
There's a very good reason for that, but I'll cover it in a future lesson on Mercator projections. Nautical charts are flat sheets that use a Mercator projection to project points from the surface of the spherical Earth to a flat sheet, and it's a very important navigation topic to understand. But I'll cover that in a future lesson. Okay, now let's look at latitudes. All lines of latitude are parallel. If you look at the Earth from directly above the equator, this is how they look. They curve around the Earth, of course, but if you look at any chart, they all run east-west parallel to each other. In fact, they're called parallels. Much of the western border between Canada and the U.S. is called the 49th parallel. Secondly, let's look at some angles between lines of latitude. Here are two pairs. One pair is from 10 to 11 degrees north, and the other is from 50 to 51 degrees north. Clearly, the distance on the surface of the Earth, subtended by each pair, is the same. Unlike lines of longitude, which converge, because lines of latitude are parallel, lines separated by the same angle are separated by the same distance on the surface of the Earth. And in fact, this is where we get the definition of a nautical mile. A nautical mile is defined as the distance on the surface of the Earth between any two lines of latitude that are separated by one minute of arc. So, for example, if you measure the distance between 49 degrees north and 49 degrees and one minute north, that is the distance of one nautical mile. And you can use your dividers on your chart to measure out nautical miles from the minutes of arc of latitude on the side of your chart. This is an arbitrary example, but these dividers are spanning from 41 degrees 52 minutes to 42 degrees 10 minutes. So this example shows a distance of 18 nautical miles. However, there is a cautionary note for measuring distances this way on a marine chart. You should use the lines of latitude close to where you're measuring a distance. That's because a Mercator projection stretches distances going north. So one nautical mile at the top of a chart is not the same as a nautical mile at the bottom of the chart. But again, you'll have to wait for my lesson on Mercator projections to understand why. For now, just remember that's what you have to do. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. This is how navigation solves the problem of defining a location for every point on the surface of the Earth. But the next problem is, what is the direction from one location to another? You're probably already aware that due north and south point directly to the north and south poles along any line of longitude, and due east and west point 90 degrees from there along the lines of latitudes. But what we need to understand next is exactly how these directions relate to magnetic and compass directions, and that's what I'll cover in the next lesson.